I don't know if you can remember back when, but this is where we left off. Melvin is getting some pressure. Pump me up. Well, we've made some progress. We have made some progress in putting the pressure to Melvin. We want to give you that update now. So tune in and listen up and let us know what you think. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you on the other side. Let me start first with a quick update on why pressure in a heat engine is so key. If we remember, I have a particular volume of air or gas working fluid in a heat engine. As I heat that working fluid up, it expands a certain amount. That expansion is based on the amount of working fluid or air that I have in that particular volume. If I add more air in that particular volume or some other working type of gas, helium, hydrogen, whatever it might be, if I add more in that same volume, heat it up, it's going to expand more, right? Because I have more air that's being heated up, so I'll have more expansion. In turn, in the heat engine, where I have more working fluid being heated up, I'm going to get more power output. So we can have a very similar engine configuration with more pressure in the working volume, which translates into more power output. So we're hoping that the internally generated pressure from the pump that we're adding to the Melvin heat engine will increase the pressure inside the engine chamber, thereby increase the amount of expansion that takes place, pushing the piston back, thereby increasing the power output of our, of our heat engine. That's our goal. And that's what we're going to take you through here is how we design the particular air pump for the heat engine, how it's working, and what we're seeing at this point in time. Stay tuned. Just a quick note, here's our early Phillips a, a heat engine and we take a lot of design inspiration from this and you can see their pump their internal pump here is in the lower left of the crankcase and you can see how that pump operates to uh, increase the crankcase pressure which is then in turn uh, transferred into the uh, main engine chamber via that little channel on the left side of the piston. Let's just talk a little bit about the design principles behind the uh, the pump for the Melvin. Here we have a uh, we have some of the stats of the power stroke of the of the Melvin engine up above. See the peak force of about 195 pounds. Uh, the pump design. We ended up with a 2.5 inch piston, with a stroke of about two inches, uh, generating about 9.8 about 10 cubic inches of uh, of, of air and a terminal uh, pressure of about 11.2. Now that's not what we're seeing in actual, we're seeing closer to three or four, uh, but we, we wanted to just calculate and make sure we weren't taking too much energy out of the engine for the pump. And then we get up here, down here, we have about 5.5 uh, minutes that we see for the uh, pressurization of the Kinemax housing and the chamber itself. Here is the CAD rendering of the pump, top to bottom, and also here's the view with the cam operating on the top. It's a simple cam-driven pump, and here's a quick section view of it, and you can see the port on the right is outside of the crank, and the port on the left side is inside the crankcase. Now, this is a picture of some of the iterations we went through with this pump, getting the size right the piston rings to fit right, the spring rate for the return to fit right, things of that nature. Quite a few iterations. Uh, if I look at the pump in section view, it looks something like this. We did end up putting a check valve on the intake and the outtake port just to help uh, improve its efficiency. Here we're hand cycling the pump to see that it developed pressure. Here is where it's mounted inside the uh, engine. And it's a pretty good fit. It's right underneath the crank. Here's the view from the outside. You see the intake port and it's coming around. And the cam above it. 
and you can see the flywheel is a pretty tight fit but it clears and then as it revolves around that uh, cam then depresses the pump and pushes the air into it you'll see there that we have a duck bill valve instead of the ball valve they were just a little a little heavy so we went with that here you can see a quick run uh, of the uh, engine with the pump in operation you can see basically uh, how it's operating here in a minute. I think we'll switch down there. Yeah, there you go. And the return's pretty good. There's not a lot of bounce going on. The, uh, the angle's pretty slow. The angle's pretty low for it to jump. Here we'll go into a test run of the actual pressure uh, system itself with the, with the crankcase closed. The others were where it was open, it's closed. And you can see here the engine starting up. Um, and as we seal that up, the back cover. You can see we also have the chamber hooked up to a computer that's not in the view, and then we're taking pressure readings of the chamber as it's cycling through. This is going to be about a one or two minute run where we're uh, checking the pressure to see how it's how it's gaining. The balloon in the back is there just to reduce the initial pressure, back pressure on the piston. And in addition to the pump, there's also a uh, sniffer valve on the side of the crank that helps bring the air into the kinematics initially. Uh, so that is working in conjunction with the pump to increase the overall and add air to that volume of the entire engine environment. You should hear the speed climbing along the pressure. the pressurization of the engine. This is the data that we're collecting from the engine. You can see here we have pressure on the left hand side versus time on the right hand side. And that pressure is not, it's not 300 psi, it's, it's 3 psi at the top, right? So it's, it's not that. But you can see the pressure is climbing about uh, 0.25 psi per minute or per minute and a half. That's about a good, that's a pretty good rate we think. Uh, that, that circled area is where we open the back cover and then close it up again. So we are really uh, feeling positive about this and hoping we can get to a much higher power output of our Melvin engine. We're working real hard to get our uh, engines built, both the Melvin Junior and the Melvin full-size engines. We're adding staff. Uh, we appreciate everybody's support. Please keep following us, keep uh, buying engines, and we will talk to you soon with an update on duration, max power uh, reached uh, through duration, and some other good uh, updates we have coming at you. Thanks again for your support, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. One other note I might add, we are going to open up our order window once again. We've worked down our backlog to a good bit, uh, so we will open it up for a few more engines at this time if uh, I know there was some interest out there. Thanks again.